Warner Brothers was doing the devil's work, according to the National Cathedral in Washington when it released Devil's Advocate in 1997. The devil is in the details. Welcome to Video Recall, a new series about movies that were banned and buried on DVD and VHS. Sex scandals, legal battles, and creative feuds are just a few of the reasons why you'll probably never see these rare versions of famous films. So sit back, buckle up, and adjust your cup holders, because we're about to take a spin through the darkest and most remote back alleys of home video history. Of the many recalled DVDs in this series, surprisingly few were recalled for content issues in the actual features. And The Devil's Advocate might be the only example of a major studio film substantially changed based on litigation involving its production design. The year is 1997, and an adaptation of an earlier script by the controversial Larry Cohen is making ways with a timely tale of greed, seduction, and politics. In The Devil's Advocate, Keanu Reeves is an ambitious young lawyer led astray by employer Al Pacino, who turns out to be the devil incarnate. But by the end of the year, the film was also getting some unwanted attention from religious advocacy groups, and even found itself in legal hot water with the National Cathedral in Washington. The Cathedral, along with sculptor Frederick E. Hart, alleged that the film not only copied, but also grossly perverted a work of art that Hart had created for the Cathedral. Hart issued a statement that he was, quote, deeply disturbed that 13 years of work to create a sculpture of the profound mystery and beauty of God's creation would be so debased and perversely distorted, end quote, when the carved figures came to life in the film and began engaging in sexual acts, according to the lawsuit. Either Warner Brothers didn't have a lawyer with Al Pacino's unconquerable legal qualities, or the cathedral really did have divine intervention in its favor, because despite a lack of demonstrable similarities between the on-screen sculpture and Hart's original work, a federal judge threatened to block the film's home video release if Warner Brothers couldn't reach a settlement with the artist. Order. And the issue couldn't be resolved soon enough for Warner Brothers, who had already spent considerable money preparing and advertising a major home video release. A lengthy disclaimer on the back of the box clarifying the cathedral's lack of an endorsement for the picture was deemed an inadequate measure to address the problem. And even a sticker repeating the same small print on the cover wasn't enough to satiate Hart. They've got this whole team here. They, they're throwing everything but the kitchen sink at this case. As if to detract attention from the looming legal shutdown, without making any changes to the film itself, Warner Brothers even altered the original key art for the home video release to further obscure the vague stonework surrounding the film stars in the theatrical poster. I don't know, I kind of think it's an improvement. On the very day of the home video release, Warner finally relented and reached a compromise with Hart. Warner Brothers would be allowed to move 475,000 copies exclusively to rental stores, but it would have to recall the consumer release until it edited the original picture to address Hart's concerns. It's unclear if additional copies were actually put on store shelves and consequently pulled, or if a number of the 475,000 first pressings somehow circumvented the rental market, but one way or another, tens of thousands of unaltered DVDs soon became sought after relics as one of the few ways to experience the picture in its intended unaltered form. Look, he want, you want to get in the five dollar bin, don't you? That's it. That's it. Meanwhile, Warner Brothers turned to the burgeoning magic of CGI as a band-aid for their legal woes, and the resulting course correction could rival George Lucas's afterthought CGI Star Wars uh, quote-unquote improvements for most unwarranted and unwanted post-release changes in the history of film. It would been, have been literally impossible for him to walk behind the Jabba character because of the tail. So George had the idea, so why don't you have him step on his tail? I think I had a choice. The actual alterations to the sculpture don't look that bad, but the piece becomes so abstract and simplistic that the shots that place it so prominently now become completely out of place. Are you stifling a yawn? No, sir. The most egregious decision, though, is to show different versions of the sculpture throughout the film with no regard for continuity. For God's sake, man! You could put this down to the fantastical animation of the artwork apparent later in the film, but its dramatic and unjustified change from a modern empty frame of sweeping lines into a tapestry of human figures completely undermines the later transformation. Basically, the statue is now in its simplified CGI form for the first two scenes it's featured in before transitioning into its original appearance shortly before the actual scripted transformation some ten minutes later. 
If you're confused, uh, watch the movie, and then probably still be confused like me. This added transition appears as Keanu enters Al Pacino's flat, and his reaction to his transformation seems really sedated, even by Keanu Reeves' sedated kind of acting style standards. I doubted everything, even my mind. Probably because he wasn't actually reacting to anything in the original script. It works to a degree because the character of Kevin has already begun to see through the facade of Pacino's, like, mortal presence. On the other hand, the effect it has on the film's pacing is not in any way insignificant. Effectively cutting out a 10 minute respite from blatantly fantastical shenanigans and prematurely betraying the statue's thematic significance. Most infuriatingly though, this end sequence raises the question, why make all these changes at all if it was deemed acceptable to see the full statue in its uncensored form for the last 10 minutes of the movie anyways. The last 10 minutes, by the way, that Hart specifically vehemently objected to. Seriously, bro? So this entire futile exercise, the lawsuits, the court proceedings, the disclaimers, the rental stipulations, the recall, and the expensive CGI was really just to eradicate this one piece of set deck, which is still in the fucking movie, from two earlier scenes in the exact same cut. I mean, you could call it the most expensive, contrived, unnecessary, and deliberate continuity error in the history of cinema. His own private cosmic gag reel. But for all that hyperbole, unlike the infamous Star Wars revisions, uh, the changes are still subtle enough that those who don't know Warner's dirty little secret and saw this version first probably wouldn't be any the wiser. As for the sculptor Frederick Hart, his days were sadly numbered, which, let's face it, might be the only reason that this thing saw the light of day in the first place. Hart passed away just two years after the film's theatrical release, and while I think his claims were unfounded, unwarranted, and misguided, the guy was a great artist, what can you say? Was it all worth it? In the end, the film still has sculptural art reminiscent of Renaissance-inspired modern Christian mosaics, whereas in the original, you could interpret it as a genuinely Christian art form perverted through the devil's powers of physical and moral manipulation, it now comes across as decidedly more agnostic but inoffensive modern art that suddenly and without explanation changes into mock Christian imagery with the same anti-Christian sentiments. So in other words, no, it really wasn't worth it. <laughs> I hope you're kidding. Perhaps the original was communicating the old adage, the devil is in the details, suggesting the line between Christianity and Satanism isn't as clean cut as most of us would like to believe. If that's a damning interpretation of religion, it's also one I would argue would fortify the beliefs and actions of Christian viewers and cause others to reevaluate their belief systems in the context of a film that subjectively favors those who turn against the devil. Would anyone really be stupid enough to interpret that as an endorsement of any given religious institution or artist towards Warner Brothers, Al Pacino, or Satan? I mean, if they did, it would be a baseless generalization, kind of like believing that all mediocre CGI revisions are motivated by short-sighted corporate or political interests. Oh. Wait. So if you want the Undoctor Devil's Advocate, look for the good old beloved Cardboard Snapper Case Edition and check for the disclaimers. The easiest way to tell if you have one of these coveted first releases is by looking on the spine. The special edition text wasn't added until the second run with added CGI, so you want the one without the special edition on the spine, but it's still gonna say it on the cover. So it's just sort of the less special special edition, I guess. If you want to double check, look for this catalog number on the disc inside. The unaltered DVDs run for about $25 on eBay, which is a bargain considering their relative rarity. But if it just feels wrong to spend that kind of money on a standard definition release of a Keanu Reeves movie from the 90s, then keep your eyes open at your local thrift stores or flea market or media exchange because most sellers won't even know the banished satanic propaganda in their possession. I'm Joseph and you've been watching Video Recall on BuzzCuts, a channel that celebrates unpopular culture and no-budget independent filmmaking. Be sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned for more Video Recall.